We are live. Yay. Woo! Woo! <laughs> this is working. It's working. I like it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Make sure I've got your name here, my name, so people know who we are. Yay. I think we're on. Testing, testing. Testing. We're all good. <laughs> Yay. Testing. And we'll wait just a second so people can jump in. Actually, I will thank everybody for being here, whether you're live or watching the replay of this. It'll be out there for you to watch. And you're going to see me looking all over because I'm playing with a new program here that I've never used before. So that's what I... Probably because I don't have my glasses on either. I probably need that too. <laughs> Sometimes that helps. <laughs> and thank you everybody for being here. This is the first of our video series, Inspiring, um, inspiring <laughs> Interview. <laughs> <laughs> We're live, people. We are live. <laughs> and I could not think of a better person to have um, as our very first live interview. This chick is amazing. And actually, you know what? I'm going to read. I'm going to read a little bio here. Kim Miles, master trainer who helps people set and achieve their goals. Following a terrific 15-year career in the advertising and publishing world, Kim found her true calling as an independent consultant and national vice president for Arbonne International. Kim inspires and trains people to do what they've never thought possible and live the life with vision and balance. So true. She's a certified leadership coach and co-author of Boys Before Business, The Single Girl's Guide to Having It All. And after studying the law of attraction and success principles with Jack Canfield, Kim saw a need to help people get started in the manifesting process and she's a co-founder uh, of the nonprofit kids dojo which helps kids be active confident and healthy i also know that she is an awesome network marketing coach she's a mama of how many dogs do you have you got two yeah. doggies <laughs> yeah. and an awesome husband she's a cool chick and i thank you so much for being here um, Kim, thank you. Um, Welcome. I'm excited. I am really excited too. I'm. I've got my notepad here. I'm always ready to take notes when I when we when I when we chat because you are just full of knowledge. And when we were discussing what you should talk about to narrow it down, it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much that I would love for people to hear from you. And um, I really like this passion. Just finding your passion but so but, well, tell me what what do you consider what is finding what is passion what, what would you I think you know so many of us know what we don't want to do and we know what we don't like to do but we don't necessarily know what we'd love to do and to me passion is something that is going to give you that continued enthusiasm and focus and energy that you need to succeed so if you're waking up excited and energetic and you have focus, then you know you're on the right path. You know you're doing something that you're passionate about or excited about. You know, I have definitely had times where, you know, I was dreading doing something and then I just know, like, you know, like you can feel it when it doesn't feel good and it's not, you're, it's, you're not following your passion. Now, I also know so many of us, you know, we have to sometimes do things we don't want to do because we have bills to pay, life life to take care of. And so there's ways that you can find passion in your everyday job, whether you love it or hate it, or your everyday life. And I think so many people, um, we just get used to doing the same thing and we forget to look for those opportunities to find our passion, to be passionate, to do something that we love. And we do focus on all the, we're really clear about the things we don't like, but so many of us don't take the time to really write down the things that we love to do. 
And then once we do, to then check to see how often are we doing it? Are we doing, you know, if you love to go hiking, when was the last time you actually went hiking? If that gives you focus and passion and energy, you know, if you love, you know, going to a concert, you know, how, when was the last time you did that? Like, what are the things that you're doing daily? It doesn't have to be your job that are bringing you passion. Because if you can find passion in pockets, you can find a little passion in different pockets that can fuel you to do sometimes the things that we don't want to do, the things we have to do. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm writing here. That's why I'm looking down. <laughs> I, know. I just, I like, seriously, I just eat up all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That, that does make total sense. So, and you were talking about writing it down. So you suggest that people literally sit down I mean, you will sit down and write down well, is that that's how you find is that your process like I think what you do first you write down all the things you don't like to do maybe at your job you you know hate talking on the phone or maybe at your job you don't like going to meetings or whatever it is you know maybe you know write down the things you don't want to do because get those off off your mindset and then sometimes just looking at them, the exact opposite is something that you love to do. And then, you know, so so write what you don't like and then take time and write the things that you do love to do. Like, what do you love to do in your work? What do you love to do? You know, I think that there's sort of um, a couple categories. There's like the health category, the career category, your finance category, your relationships, your spiritual and your community. Those are kind of all the areas that I like to focus on because I think if you can have passion in each one of those, then you're going to have a really balanced life. And sometimes, you know, one area has all of it and that's okay too. And the trick is to find those little, like I said, pockets of passion. Like what can you do in your community that is going to give you a little bit of passion? What can you do in your work that's going to give you a little bit of passion? And so, yeah, I start to think about writing down not just the things that you're passionate about, but if you could ha pick that ideal life, if you weren't worried about money, if you weren't worried about time, if you weren't worried about your everyday stresses, what would that ideal life look for you? And then from that, pick one or two areas where you might be able to tweak your own personal life and get closer to that. You know, the problem is people will do this ideal life and they'll be like, oh, that's, that's a pipe dream. That's totally unrealistic. I'm never going to get there. And we're kind of that all or nothing. Where really, if we just looked at one category and like, you know what, in my health, I know that I'm really happy if I go for a run, I can tweak something in my life to do that. And so it's finding, you know, it's not doing everything at once. It's finding a few areas where you're going to find that passion, because if you can find it in one area, that will tend to fuel the next area and the next area and the next area. I love that. I've never thought about it that way. Because um, I think I have had that all or nothing mentality. Mm -hmm. There's and there's probably times where I kind of come in and out of it where I think, oh, you know, you write this dream and you think that every part has to be in place right. to know that you're in your passion. When I, I love what you said, just your your passion pockets, just pa pockets of passion throughout your your day. I love that. And, and I think I everybody from those little, you know, those little opportunities, like, or how can I bring joy into this? You know, we all do things at work that we don't love. So where can I find a little bit of joy? You know, maybe it's going out to lunch with a friend, you know, maybe it's taking, you know, a break. Maybe it's actually, you know, finding a, a, some place where you can find that little bit of joy. That's awesome. So, and, it, it, this all of this sounds like the law of attraction. Just Absolutely. once you open that one door and you're like, oh, I started doing this. Then the new opportunities come in. And so, like I said, so many times we focus, well, I will do this when, you know, once I make this amount of money, then I'll go find my passion. Or once I do this, you know, then I'll go do this, you know, and I will tell you for, my career, you know, I spent a lot of time in the advertising industry and in the marketing industry, and I was loving what I was doing. I wasn't even looking for anything else. I thought 
I was fulfilled and happy. And you know, at one point, the magazine publishing industry, I was really passionate about. And when my sister came to me to start this other business, I was like, absolutely not. I couldn't see anything in that business that would be something I'd want to do. But I was looking for more time. I was looking for flexibility. And I just decided to jump in. And, you know, lo and behold, it was that job. It's that, you know, my position that opened up all these doors. And I found my passion when I kind of least expected it. I found that I was really passionate about coaching and teaching and training. And if I would have never just said yes and be open and just be, okay, let me see where this takes me. I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to try this to see if I find my passion. So sometimes it's just the willingness to be open, the willingness to say yes to something, um, you know, that you, that you might not know because your passion can pop up in places that you don't even expect. It, do you think that passion can change over time? Like you were passionate about something at one point, kind of what you were talking about, and then you realized, well, maybe. At some point, there it might not, you know, if you go back to that original definition, is it giving you focus and energy and enthusiasm? You know, things change. You know, I was in my industry for a long time, and I lost some of that passion and focus and you know, the industry was changing. And, you know, I did, like I said, I didn't know I was looking for something. And all of a sudden I started to do some personal growth and I started to find like this renewed enthusiasm and focus and energy. You know, I, today I, whenever I'm working, I don't even feel like I'm working. Like I love what I do. And so it's exciting and fun and it fuels me. And, you know, I, I never would have expected I would have found that. Um, and so, yeah, it can absolutely change. And that's why some people, you know, you get stuck like, well, I'm passionate about this and I'm just going to do on it. And then they start to force it instead of just allowing things to happen. Right. Okay. So now, would you suggest just going back to the writing and writing things down? Should you check in with yourself maybe every so often to write again and say, okay, and I don't want to say after five years or 10 years, you know, there doesn't have to be. Just like, what's a guideline? I mean, how do you know when it's time to kind of rethink stuff? I think, you know, it's always good to check in with yourself, always good to revisit and reevaluate. And I think the minute you start questioning, like, mm, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this really making me happy? I mean, most of us have an intuition that we just don't listen to. You know, if you start questioning, that's exactly the time that you should start um, you know, reevaluating and revisiting. And, you know, there's um, something called a passion test. And I can't remember right now who's done this passion test, but it's a great exercise where you write down all the things that you're passionate about. And let's say I'm passionate about, you know, uh, going for hikes, playing tennis, listening to music, cooking, you know, spending time with friends. So those are my five things. And you can do a passion test where you can go, okay, what would be more important, if the only thing, if you could only do one, you know, playing tennis or going to concerts. And then I would say, you know, I'd pick one and then I'd go to the next one, playing tennis or going hiking. And you can kind of do a passion test on your own and just kind of check in, like, what's the most important thing on my list if I only had to pick one? And then when you can narrow down your passion, you know, there are so many, entre you know, ideas and so many ways that you can incorporate your passion and then you can also do a list of like your strengths you know maybe you're a great coach and a um, great teacher and you have a passion for tennis you know why not look into being a tennis instructor a tennis counselor who knows but a lot of times people are like, like well I'm passionate about this and I don't see any way I can make money at doing it but you might be surprised if you really focus on what your skills are what your passions are and just think of how you can marry them. You know, you might not be a professional tennis player. It might be too late for that, but there might be ways to still find a passion in something that you love. And do you, because um, I hear this every so often, like we'll keep with tennis. Some people don't even think that they have a few minutes in their day to squeeze that in. It's like, oh, I wish I could paint. I wish I could play tennis, but, how do you, how do you, 
Do you really, I mean, how do you do it? How do you get it in there when you really, it, you really feel like I just can't get it in. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I'm too old. I'm too, like, how do I'm you? Everything. I mean, it really comes to what are you making a priority in your life? I mean, we all have, you know, 24 hours in the day. And if you actually kind of like mapped out your day, the average person somewhere in the week typically has an extra 15 hours. I mean, I've done this exercise with tons of people about, you know, how much time do you sleep, eat, 15 work. 15 hours? Yes. When it comes down to the end of <laughs> a seven days, 24 hours in the day, when you add in your work, your sleeping, you know, your errands, your eating, I mean, everything. I've done this exercise and the average person has an extra 15 hours a day that they're not even realizing. And it, you know, I'm counting like, go watch TV, do whatever you want. And it's just about what we're making a priority. Right. And so what is, and maybe something has to give, you know, maybe short term, you have to give up something for long term. But if these are your passions, look at your, like what you're doing that aren't your passions, you know, and what can you delegate? Maybe you're spending, you know, hours cleaning the house and you hate cleaning the house. You know, you can delegate that. You can hire somebody. And in that hour, you could be doing something that's passionate, that you're passionate about. And in that hour, you're going to get fueled. And that's going to make you a better mom, a better employee, a better wife, daughter, whatever it is. And, you know, people will say, well, I can't afford to do that. And to me, you can't afford not to do it. You have to delegate the things that you don't love because then you're going to make room for the things that you're passionate about. And that's going to put you in a state where you can start attracting more money, more time, all those other things. You know, it's about do you want excuses or do you want to go live your dream life? You know, you can't do both at the same time. Right. Oh, absolutely. Could, but you can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it, right. Exactly. And I mean, we talk about with my family here, I quit my job. I was the breadwinner. I was making six figures and, but I wasn't, I got to the point where I wasn't happy. Right. You're not, and no. nothing else mattered be, except with being with my family, being home. And you know, when I, when I quit, like that money was gone. I mean, so we had to try and budget, but I would have been happier than I ever had. And that was more precious than that six six figure right. income and at that time. You were a better wife and a better mom. Absolutely. And I'm sure your health was better. Absolutely. All of those things. Yes. So we make these crazy trade offs because we think we have to do something, and I think we're just missing the boat. And that's why it goes back to just find little bits of that passion. You don't have to change your whole career. You don't have, you know, I don't want somebody to go, I'm quitting my job tomorrow. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can if you want, but you know, if you can just start incorporating the things that make you joy, the things that you're enthusiastic about that are going to like lift your vibration and energy up, everything starts to have that ripple down effect. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Everything started coming into place. You know, at first I thought, how are we going to do this? But, oh, yeah, we're, we're so good now. I mean, it, fact, you'll find a way. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's like, I just love talking to you. <laughs> I, mean, I also think that everyone, you know, has something that's sort of their core genius, something that they know that they're really good at. And I'm always about, you know, focusing on your strengths and not paying that much attention to your weaknesses and really finding that thing that you're great at. Maybe for you, it's going to be interviewing people and doing these um, types of calls. And then I'm going to say, do more of that, you know, for, you know, who knows, but I think everybody has a core genius that sometimes they're not listening to, but if they actually listen to it, they would start to find more passion in their everyday life. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I love that little term core genius. Yes. Love that. <laughs> so awesome. See, I have like I have a pages. I, I mean, I have all my notes here of all the little nuggets that you give me. I just I love chatting and I would love to talk more. But um, 
I don't want to take any more of your time. What are we at? Um, yeah, it's been about 20 minutes. So if somebody wants to get in touch with Kim and wants to hear more from Kim, um, we're going to have your all of your information um, on my website, and that's irenekachel.com slash inspiring interviews, so that they can watch the replay. It'll also be here on Facebook and all your info. Um, and I don't want to end now exactly, but I want to make sure that people know that they can get in touch with you if they want more. Um, what, what have I missed? Like what else? I, 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 want, I want to keep going, but I also don't want to take up all your time. <laughs> Um, I think that, you know, the thing is once you might not know what your passion is right now. And I'm going to say to people, you know, go try new things, be open, you know, say yes to things, you know, say yes to things that you're not even sure of, you know, say, you can say no to, you know, I always say, say no to the good. So you can say yes to the great, but sometimes, you know, if you're like, mm, I should do that or if you are fearful about doing something, that's really your body way, body's way of saying, that's exactly what you wanna do. You know, if you start to feel like, oh, I don't know if I should, my guess is that's exactly what you should be doing. And so, you know, I would never have been in this position that I'm in now, and I would have never found my core genius and the things that I love to do. You know, I love to help people build businesses, build self-esteem, build belief, build their dreams. life. like I'm a builder. That's what I love to do. I would have never found that out if I hadn't just taken a chance, started a business, I hadn't left corporate America. I mean, I, I waited to leave corporate America till, you know, I was at a certain point, but sometimes you just have to take a chance. And, you know, one of those things, um, if you haven't read Mel Robbins' book, Five Second Rule, she always says that, you know, if you're questioning just to go five, four, three, two, one, boom, get into action. And I find that that will serve people. Like once you start, you're fine. It's the thinking about it and the going back and forth and analyzing it and wondering, well, should I take, you know, a day off to do this? Should I do this? You know, my answer is you should do it. You know, if you're questioning it, if you're fearful about it, you got to go for it. Yes. Uh, and I have read that. And yeah, that's, I do use that when I remember and I start right? using it's it more. Like, I mean, it, it's a habit to get into, but once you get into action, everything changes. Yeah, it's like putting the toe in the pool and it takes you, you know, how long to jump in the pool instead of right. just saying, okay, boom. And this moment you jump in, you get to have that much more fun so much sooner exactly. instead of waiting on the side. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Love that. And I love this. Say no to the good. So you can say yes to the great. Love yeah. that. Love it. Love it. My gosh. See, I'm just writing all this stuff down. Okay. So anybody watching, please comment below i want to know what you got out of this interview because i mean what's the biggest thing you got out of the interview because i would be typing all night long if i <laughs> wanted to type everything i got i just i appreciate you so much um thank you this was awesome thank um, you i'm excited to hear everybody else's and i love this whole idea and hopefully i'll be back yay thank you yes i would love for you to come back thank you so much kim and I will see you all later. Thank you, everybody, for being on the call or broadcast or whatever this is. Bye. Bye, Kim.